Hello everyone and welcome to the 7th Castlevania Symphony of the Night Developer's Diary. In this video we're going to take a deep deep dive into Alucard's animations and his control scheme as well as take another look at the Alchemy Lab level. For those of you who are looking forward to the second part of the Shadow and Highlights video, don't worry that's on its way too as is a new GG Shinobi video. But getting Alucard's controls and his animations sorted is something I've been itching to do for a long time now. Although I have already managed to get a controllable and animated Alucard onto the screen, as you can see from the footage here, it still leaves a lot to be desired. And that is something that's going to become even more evident once we really start comparing it to the PlayStation original. But before we get stuck in, we have some music news. Those of you who saw the last video will already have had a sneak preview of Alianga's Festival of Servants track, and you can now listen to the full version on his YouTube channel. Inglebard has also been busy producing his fourth track of the game, Lost Painting. Many people, myself included, have always thought that Lost Painting has a certain Christmassy, festive sound to it, so I think it's a particularly good song to listen to at this time of year. And last but not least, I am delighted to introduce a new musician to the project, Tennoko, who has produced his excellent version of Dance of Pearls. Well, when I say he's new to the project, he's actually been involved for a couple of months now working very hard on getting the instruments down in just exactly as they're supposed to, and you can see the results there in his latest track. Okay, that's enough music news for now, let's not keep Alucard waiting any longer. One of my favourite parts of the game, and I think this is the same for many other people too, is Alucard himself as a character. Just the way he controls and glides around the screen, it tells you a lot about him, and that's something that I really wanted to try out as much as possible to replicate in this Mega Drive version of the game. As time has gone by, I've become more and more dissatisfied with my first version of the Alucard character and the way he moves and controls and animates, so I was really keen just to rewrite the entire uh, code for the controls and the animation and just start from scratch. As you can see in this picture, in order to get my version playing as closely as possible to the PlayStation version, I spent a lot of time just playing them side by side one after the other on the same computer. And shortly afterwards I even worked out a way to get them both working at the same time from the input from one single controller. So that way I could just use one controller and control both versions at the same time, which made comparing a lot a lot easier. I wanted to start off with a nice and easy correction and as you can see here in the PlayStation original if you just tap the left or right when Alucard's facing the other way instead of just the sprite flipping as it does in my one he actually does a nice graceful turn and so that was very easy to do and as you can see I've updated it and now my Alucard also does a very nice turn even if you just tap the left or right button when he's facing the other way. Next I had almost the opposite problem whereas on the PlayStation version if you just tap the direction you're already facing Alucard would do a, a slight shuffle forward whereas on my one he will fully commit to the big you know, starting to run animation which looked a little bit silly. So thankfully just like the turn this was pretty easy to, to uh, code in so just a few lines of code and it was all ready and fixed. At this point I was ready to tackle a much more complex and difficult and tricky issue and that would be the jumping. So as you can see here I'm just pressing the jump button over and over again each for different lengths of time and in my version no matter how long you, you hold a button for he just jumps at the same height every time whereas in the PlayStation version how high Alucard jumps is really dependent on how, how long you keep the button down for. I know when I was a kid I, I think I thought they mattered on how hard you press the button but of course the Mega Drive doesn't have pressure sensitive pads it's all to do with how how long you hold the jump button for and that's how I, how I coded it into this game. As you can see from the footage playing now I've managed to implement some code where the Alucard he's jumped just like the PlayStation version it depends on how long you hold the C button for so the jumping mechanics are much more sophisticated now. I think for the, the smaller jumps it's already very close to how Alucard reacts in the PlayStation game. However for the higher jumps I'm still not quite there yet. In the PlayStation version when you jump very high 
he, I think he's, his cloak has a kind of effect where it slows down his fall and I've tried to replicate that but it hasn't been 100% successful so far there's still a big difference in terms of the the higher jumps but the smaller jumps I'm thinking I'm getting close to the to the PlayStation original you've also probably noticed by now that I've kept the jumping animation pretty simple so when he jumps up he has one single frame of animation on the way down he has another frame of animation and uh, I just want to get the actual jumping physics right and then once that's all done I'll then go back and do the animations properly too. Seeing as I don't have access to the original code I can only really guess at what the the jumping velocities are, what the gravity is in the game and so on so this is something that's going to take a lot of tweaking to get right in the future. Fortunately a lot less guesswork was involved in getting the walking speed correct as there was a YouTuber, a, a Castlevania Symphony of the Night speedrunner by the name of Dragon Blitz who in a video had stated that the walking speed was a 1.5 so I simply put 1.5 into my code and as you can see from this footage playing now the Mega Drive version it looks pretty much the same as the PlayStation version in terms of where Alucard gets in the backgrounds when you move him from left to right so the foreground's a bit different here but if you look at the backgrounds he pretty much ends up at the same position when I do left or right in both versions now that I've drawn your attention to the backgrounds of the games, you've probably now noticed the differences in resolutions between the two versions. Whereas the PlayStation original had a horizontal resolution of 256 pixels, the Mega Drive version has a horizontal resolution of 320 pixels. Any of you who have seen the DF Retro episode about Castlevania Symphony of the Night will probably remember that the, when the team they ported the game to the Saturn, they stretched some of the art assets so that they will fit into the Saturn's 320 uh, pixel horizontal resolution. For this Mega Drive version I've gone for the more simple solution of keeping the art assets exactly as they are, so not stretching them or anything, but just put them in as normal and then the result is, as with many Super Nintendo and Mega Drive multiplats back in the day, on the Mega Drive version you actually have a, a larger field of view, you can see more of the of the game and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, I think maybe I'm too used to the Mega Drive version by now to looking at it all the time but to me now it's the PlayStation version that looks a little, a little stretched whereas the Mega Drive version looks normal to me, I suppose it depends what you're used to but anyway I think the, the Mega Drive version looks fine as it is so I think that's probably the right approach to take. If I bring your attention back to Alucard for the moment, you can see that I've been demonstrating there's still a few bugs in the in the movement and in the animation. So for example here is in the PlayStation version when you're walking you do a, a sword swipe and then you carry on walking again. He, he does the start up walking animation but whereas in my one that doesn't happen and you probably also saw before when I was doing the, the ducking movements, the standing up animation wasn't there plus if you attacked when you was ducking and let go of the the downwards uh, button on the d-pad then he would kind of do a, a double slash or slash at the bottom then at the top and if you started when you were on the top you did a, a normal attack and then you press the down button he'll kind of do a double attack so that's what I wanted to fix next and as you can see now I've now implemented the uh, full ducking animation so when he ducks he does the animation and then when you let go of the the downward on the d-pad he then rises he has a rising animation now and it's all looking a lot smoother than it was before if you look at the attacking animations too i think they're more or less the same as the playstation version it's not 100 percent i think on the playstation version he does a strikes a bit more of a pose and right at the end leaves a sword kind of behind him but I think the Mega Drive version is now very responsive and he's very close and as you can see here I'm trying to repeat that bug where if I let go of the, the direction pad while I'm attacking it will it'll rise up and do a double hit but it doesn't happen anymore and the jumping attacks looking pretty okay too. And I've also now written the code to implement it so that when he does the sword slash when he's running he then does the start run animation again just like in the PlayStation version. At this point in the process I really want to start to nail down the animations and especially how the for example the turning or the begin to run animations eventually turn into the regular run animation to make sure everything was running smoothly so to do that I, I filmed it I filmed both both versions and then 
as you can see here I tried to rapidly press the pause button on the on my VLC media player before realizing that I was stupid and that you could actually use the slow motion instead so that's what I did next from this slow motion view of things the way the Mega Drive and PlayStation versions play out are both very very similar but what, what I really wanted to know at this point is what would be the first frame of the running animation where it went from the beginning to run to the actual running animation as you can see the Mega Drive frame is paused on this one here whereas the PlayStation version starts from this running frame here If you take a look at the first four frames of the regular run animation, you'll see that whereas the PlayStation version, when it transitions from beginning to run to the regular run animation, it does so on the fourth frame. For mine, it does it on the first frame, which is probably why it maybe looks a bit more jerky. After writing a bit more code and changing that so that the Mega Drive version starts on the fourth frame of the running animation too, you'll see that now the both versions look a lot more similar than they did before and hopefully it means that the Mega Drive version looks a lot smoother too. Although the running animations and the beginning to run animations and the turning animations are all looking very good and quite close to the PlayStation originals, one animation that was still missing was, as you can see here, the braking animation. So when on the PlayStation version, when you stop, he does this lovely breaking animation, very exaggerated, whereas on my one, he just stops. This one was a little bit more tricky to code as as you add more and more animations, the actual code itself becomes a little bit more complex, but thankfully my code now is much more neat than it was before. I have uh, separate functions for animation, separate functions for the controls and separate functions for the collision detection so now it's much more easy to add and take away things and adjust things and as you can see I think the end result is well worth it see, although it's uh, it's not essential for the gameplay it just makes the character seem so much more alive Alucard's looking a lot more like the real Alucard now There has been one animation related issue in particular that has been plaguing the project since the very beginning and that has been the infamous Alucard limp. Since I was already in the process of redoing all the animations anyway, I really took the opportunity to get to the bottom of the issue once and for all. And I did this by drawing a long black line all on the sprite sheet, the running part, just to try to analyse it frame by frame and try to identify if there's any particular frame that was causing the whole bobbing, limping issue. It was when I got to here between the 6th and the 7th frames that I was pretty sure I'd identified where the problem was. Between the 6th and the 7th frame there's a, at the top of the head there's about a gap of about three or four pixels and that's obviously going to cause a lot of jerkiness once you put it into the animation. But I spoke to Pyron and he confirmed that there wasn't any missing animation frame. What's actually going on is that in the original animation at some points Adekard is actually slightly off the ground. He kind of floats and glides across the ground rather than always stamping his feet. So after Pyron sent me a new sprite sheet, I put that into the game and I also added the old Odo card so you could compare them side by side and as you can see from this footage, the new one looks a lot lot smoother in terms of his walking animation. In addition to rewriting the animation and the controls code, I also wanted to redo the level collision code as well as there are a couple of major bugs in the original code which were bothering me. In the PlayStation original, whenever Alucard meets this kind of semi-solid platform tile when he jumps up through it, he never lands just in between, he always gets pushed up to the top of that tile, whereas in my version, the original level collision code, Alucard could often get stuck in between them which looked a bit awkward. Fortunately, I've managed to get some advice from someone who actually created games for the Mega Drive in the 90s and he gave me some suggestions about how the collision code was done then so I took his ideas and I rewrote the code and the behaviour of Alucard, the way he reacts to the platforms is now pretty much the same as in the PlayStation version.
Before moving on to taking a look at the Alchemy Lab level, let us have a check back and see all the new animations that we've implemented during this video. Looking at both the PlayStation and my latest version side by side, I think that apart from the jumping physics and the jumping animation, everything's looking pretty good and pretty similar to the original. I've also fixed a few other things, for example the camera. So before you had to really move to the right or the left before the camera moved, but as you can see now, Alucard pretty much stays in the centre of the screen at all times, just like in the PlayStation version. This makes the difference in resolution between the two versions even more obvious, as you can see a lot more on the right and left in the Mega Drive version than in the PlayStation. One thing that is still missing from the Mega Drive version of the game is the way that in the PlayStation version when Alucard moves he leaves this kind of a, a shadow behind him of multiple Alucards and as you can see from this footage of Revenge of Shinobi and Castlevania Bloodlines the Mega Drive can achieve a similar effect but I think for now I like the more clean presentation of the Mega Drive version so although I might add in something like that later on for now I think I'm going to keep it as it is, just as a single sprite rather than having all these shadows following Anukard around. Let's finish off now by taking a deeper dive into the Alchemy Lab level. Some of you may already have noticed that the background for the boss fight part of the Alchemy Lab level has been changed in the Mega Drive version and before I reveal the answer I'll just let you first have a, a guess yourself. Why did we need to change this for the Mega Drive version? If any of you guessed video RAM limitations then congratulations you got it right. As you can see from this debug view when I tried to put the original background into the Mega Drive game the VRAM was completely overloaded, there was no space whatsoever for any kind of sprites whether it be for Alucard or the two bosses that are going to be in this level and the VRAM itself was just completely overloaded resulting in different kind of toll corruption issues so it just wasn't possible so a redesign was needed. Pyron's version of the background here at the bottom as well as looking great is also using many fewer unique tiles. So the result is we have a lot more VRAM to play with, we have a nice space in the middle where we can put the Alucard sprites and also the two big boss enemy sprites as well. Although the Mega Drive has done a very impressive job so far of being able to handle all the VRAM requirements of the original, there has been occasions where we've had to simplify some backgrounds. Normally the simplification is pretty subtle, just uh, repeating some brick tiles and so on. However, there will be occasions such as here where we have to take a more drastic change and change some of the graphical assets, but I'm confident that we can still get the game looking good anyway. I will leave you with a look at Pyron's updated graphics for the Alchemy Lab level, as well as Inglebar's Dance of Gold music in the background. If you enjoyed this video, then please like and subscribe for more retro dev content. I'm interested in this. I will be uploading a Christmas special video next week, so don't miss out on that. But until then, farewell.